uh, can see this. All right, chemical equilibrium. All right, can anybody tell me if they've ever seen argent? I'm not going to put up with it today. All right, zip it. All right, anybody tell me if they've ever seen this graph like this? Something like this. Where? Where else? The no. Where else? Where else? You saw it last year. You saw it last year. Probably not in physics, but definitely in biology. All right? What do you think this could be? Yes. Go ahead. Come on, Brian. Is this like ATP and um, like energy used in the body? Uh, maybe not. All right. Uh, no. We could try again. Where else have we seen something like this? Let's see what happens. So we have this. Here's my here's my normal reaction. See this? This is my normal reaction. This is what it does. All right. That's my normal. That's my normal. Now what we did, we added a catalyst. All right. So we're going to add a catalyst. So here it is. What happens to my reaction? Does it speed up or does it slow down? Oh, it's something in the bottom. Yes, you're getting warmer. Um. Yes, you're getting warmer. So let's just make a quick note. The catalyst speeds up the reaction. All right, so the catalyst speeds up the reaction. How? How? What does it do? Yes. It lowers the required activation. All right. By decreasing the activation energy. All right. So by decreasing the activation energy. All right. So we decrease the activation energy. And when we did that, imagine if you're a reaction and you have a massive ball. Who's that guy that carries the ball up the hill? Who pushes it up the hill the whole time? What's his name? What's his name? Anybody know that Greek mythology? The guy that's always pushing the ball up the hill? <laughs> All right. Well, imagine you have the ball and you're pushing the ball up the hill. Which hill do you want to go up, the red or the black? Black. All right, so good. So now what in your body creates the black line to occur? What? Chemical. What? Anybody? Oh. Mm, no, not directly. Keep moving down the line. Starts with an E. Starts with an E. It's made. They're made from proteins. Enzymes. 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 So enzymes are catalysts. All right, all enzymes are catalysts, and they lower activation energy. So without enzymes in your lungs, you can't process all the stuff you take in fast enough for your body to use it. So all enzymes that you have in your body are catalysts. If you, like, go out in the sun and you get sunburned, okay, what happens and why, when we get burned, why does our skin peel and why does it not heal right away? What happens? What do you think? What happens? Yeah? Does the sunburn damage the enzymes? The sunburn damages and mutates your enzymes and your DNA at that point until you replicate more and create new enzymes. So the entire time your face or your body gets damaged or is healing, your DNA gets damaged. UV radiation is a mutagen. You know what a mutagen is? Something that mutates your DNA. Something like cigarette smoke, UV radiation, UV light. All those things mutate your DNA. And until it's fixed, your body can't replenish and fix your sunburn, your peeling skin, all that stuff. It tries to, but it got mutated. All right. So when you have high, when you have a mutagen, uh, change in pH level, uh, change in temperature, concentration, those all impact enzymes. Why do you die when you get a temperature of 107? Because your enzymes can't function. That's why you die. Not any, there's no other reason. Because your enzymes can't function at that level. All right? So here we go. All right, so we have a chemical reaction. And this occurs when? So let's make sure we understand our notes. So I want to split up our notes a little bit. 
A chemical reaction occurs when we have A, B, and C. Here is A. Right, here is A. Collisions between reacting molecules provide sufficient energy to break the bonds. Okay, so that's what a chemical that's the first thing. There's two more things that make a chemical reaction take place. The second one would be molecules collide with proper orientation. If they don't collide with proper orientation, they're not going to create products. It doesn't matter. You're not going to get a chemical reaction. And the last thing is this. All right. Bonds between atoms in the reactants, N2 and O2, are broken, and new bonds like nitrogen monoxide form. All right. So we have this. They're colliding with the proper orientation. They're going to exchange electrons here, and they go into sharing electrons here. Okay, so let's just do a quick review. What type of bond do I have in N2? Yep, diatomic. All right, diatomic, and give me the type of bond. It is a diatomic. What type of bond? Ionic, covalent, covalent. Co All right, so these guys are both covalent bonds. Now, who thinks they can tell me what intermolecular forces hold those together? Yeah. Not dipole dipole. They're the very the weakest of the weak. Dispersion. dispersion. All right. So these are dispersion. And then on the other side, you can tell me in a second, Noonan. So we have dispersion forces holding those together. What type of bond holds together NO? Where are they located? Are they located on the right or left side of your periodic table? Is anything on the left side of the periodic table? Anything on the left side would have to be an ionic. Does it have anything from the left side? So it has to be a, a what? Covalent. It's a covalent bond. And the things that hold these together are dipole dipole. All right. So just a little review for you because your final is coming up in about a month and a half. All right. So dipole dipole dispersion forces when they're the same. All right, dipole and covalent. Remember, two nonmetals are covalent. Two nonmetals are covalent. Okay? If you have any metal, it's going to be ionic. All right? All right, next. So there we go, got a little explosion there. A chemical reaction does not take place. A. If collisions between reacting molecules do not have sufficient energy to break the bond. How can you increase the energy? How can you increase the energy? Yes? Temperature. Anything else? Add more of the reactants. Very good. Or products. Molecules are not properly aligned. And this is what it looks like. All right. So we have a couple examples there for you, you to take a look at. Collisions do not form products if we have insufficient energy or wrong orientation. All right, at this point, nothing could happen. They're just, we just showed you on the first slide that they need to be lined up exactly. And when they collide, they're just gonna bounce off of each other. So let's talk about that. When we're talking about equilibrium, we're talking about all molecules at what state of matter? have to be in what state of matter? In what? Not, well, same, but same as in what same? Which one is it? These are not liquids. Yes. They're all gases, all right? So they're all gases. All molecules have to be in gaseous form to reach or be in equilibrium. All right, so anytime we're talking about this, we're talking about gases, okay? So everything in this chapter is dealing with gases. If it's not in a gas, if it's not in a gas, then it cannot reach equilibrium. I mean, what, what are you gonna do? You got some salt crystals? Well, they seem pretty happy. Think salt's gonna spontaneously break apart? You think if, if you salt on your steak, is it just gonna break apart? 
Or is it still going to be salt? All right, so the only time that we can really talk about this is everything in the gaseous stage. So if they don't hit, if they hit in the wrong orientation, what type of collision are we going to have? What's it called? These are my physics people. These are my physics people. What type of collision are all gas particles going to have? If they don't have sufficient energy to create a new bond. It's kind of like my waistband. Elastic, all right? So they're all perfectly elastic collisions, all right? Perfectly elastic. All right, so what does that mean? What does that mean if they're perfectly elastic collisions? What does that mean? What? They just bounce off. No energy transfer. Just bounce off. No energy transfer. Transfer. Okay? So when you have this, you want to know that, okay, it's perfectly elastic. We're just going to bounce off. We're going to move on. We're not going to transfer energy. So that even if you have a big daddy molecule, like a big organic compound that comes along that's a gas, like a heavy gas, like octane um, gas, it's C8, H18, it's not going to destroy an oxygen or something smaller and make something new. So they're all gas bonds. No matter how big or small they are, they just bounce off each other in what we call perfectly elastic collisions. All right, do we have any questions so far? I know I'm giving you more background than I gave the other people, but now it's online. So you will be more prepared than everybody else. All right, question, hearing, no? All right, next, activation energy. The activation energy is the minimum energy needed for a reaction to take place upon proper collision of reactants, okay? So from there, what we're gonna do is say, we want to see how much energy it takes. We can calculate that, we don't have to. It's not part of our thing that we're gonna be calculating. But you have to be able to look at a graph, find the peak, and say that's the activation energy needed. Let's talk about this graph, okay? Is this graph, somebody tell me, so on yours, you can't see it, so you need to label this. Right, make sure that you know that this is labeled. You can't really see it. This is activation energy. All right, so that big blue line that I just drew is activation energy. Do the products or reactants have more energy? Products. All right, so take a look. Products in this case have more energy. All right, so what do you think, what type of reaction do you think this is? Exo or endothermic reaction? The products have more energy. Yes? Endothermic. Endothermic, why? Because it has to gain energy from somewhere. So what takes it energy is endothermic. All right, very good. Endothermic. All right, very good. So if that line went below and had less energy after, it'd be what? Exothermic. Exothermic. All right, very good. So shouldn't be any problem there. Make sure you have that label. You're good to go. All right, next. Reaction rate. All right. A is the speed at which the reactant is used up. Is the speed at which product forms. And last but not least, we have some things that we have to know for multiple choice type questions. And they're right here. Increases when temperature rises because reacting molecules move faster, thereby providing colliding molecules with energy of activation. Okay? I don't really have anything else for that. I do on the next slide, however. All right, so we have, if we increase the concentration of reactants, so what happens? A, we increase the number of collisions. And B, we increase the reaction rate. 
And let's take a look at a little picture that, that says that. So we have reactants in the flask. Let's just say we have one uh, reactant and we have one other reactant. There's only one possible collision. All right, so if they don't have sufficient energy and they don't have what? They're not going to form. They don't have what two things? Sufficient energy and proper orientation. In this case, do you think it's going to take a long time if you're in a flask, if you only have two molecules of gas, for them to collide with sufficient energy and proper orientation to create a problem? Do you think it's going to take a long time? Yes. Yes. All right, so now we increased reactant A, and we left B the same. We have two possible collisions. Uh, might increase the rate a little bit now as we start multiplying these out. Okay, now we have four opportunities. So what am I doing here? One times one, two times one, right? That's how I that's how I get these numbers. Alright, so one times one, I can get one. Two times one gives me two. Now I have two and I have two of these. So when I have to multiply, that's how it increases exponentially. Alright, so if you add another one, added another one, added another one, you would definitely be uh, increasing the reaction rate. Okay? And that's kind of an exponential graph. Alright. Alright, a catalyst. Alright, lowers. <clears throat> speeds up the rate of reaction by lowering the energy of activation, and it's never used up. Okay? So here's the deal. Alright, let's talk about what we talked about on the last slide. Okay? Enzymes can be used indefinitely in your body. So let me ask you a question. What makes you die? Because technically, based on your body, you technically can live forever. Yes. The uh, telomeres. The what? The telomeres. What about the telomeres? They uh, keep dividing. Like they you know, keep losing like, a tail. Eventually, they like shrink up. Okay. So as you're talking about, you're talking about mutation. Yeah. All right. So as you age, the onset of continually assaulting your body with mutagens, UV radiation, pollutants in the air. Cigarette smoke, being at a party with cigarette smoke, cancer sticks. All right, being in an area by the beach for more than an hour. Those are mutagens. They are the things that will then later down the road reprogram your cells and your mitochondria to stop doing work. You can live indefinitely. Enzymes never break down unless they mutate. Your mitochondria will never stop if you feed it correctly. Okay? Once those things stop and they mutate, cease to exist. That's pretty much why you die. It's, a, it's an accumulation over your life of being exposed to many, many mutagens. All right? Regardless of what disease you hear people get or what they get, it's typically a result of some type of mutagen either gained in their familiar history, their genealogical history, or that they accumulated in their own lifetime. That's it. Somebody accumulated before. Okay? And that's why you have it. So it's going to be in your sperm, your egg, if you pass it on through, through genes. If not, um, it's going to be somewhere else that you picked up. All right, not used up. So I think that's pretty cool. You can, you can basically live forever. All right, got a little jumpy there. All right, a little wiggle wiggle. All right, all right. And we have our visitors have arrived. We're just <laughs> recording, that's fine. So we have plenty of space in the back today. All right, so a quick summary of where we're at, and then we're going to be using our little gadget that we picked up. These guys are the multiple choice type question things that you need to study. Okay? This chart summarizes the past 10 slides that we just covered. All right, increasing the factor that increased reaction rate. Okay, so of course, as you told me, we're going to have more collisions. And how does that how does that change as you add more reactants? How do we, what do we say? It's increasing what? Be the term we just said. What did I just say? It's increasing what? We did one times two, two times two. Well, yes. Possible collision. 
All right, but it's increasing how? How's the graph? What's oh, the graph? Exponentially. exponentially. So this increases exponentially. All right. All right, so it's going to increase exponentially. All right, how is our temperature? All right, so if we increase the temperature, we have more and more collisions. All right, and you can do that at home. All right, you can figure out there's going to be more collisions by just taking a balloon. Now, check this out. You go home and you take a balloon and you put in there some water. Put some water in your balloon. And you take that and you're like sitting by a campfire. You attach that balloon to a stick. It will not burst. You put it over the flame that will expand because all the energy is going to go to try to create the, the water to boil. So that balloon will not disintegrate, will not burst, but it will expand. And those collisions, we know that we're going to be increasing more collisions with temperature. And the last one is adding a catalyst. And our favorite catalyst is what? What do we know that we use all the time? Enzymes. All right? All right. So we want to have those enzymes, and that lowers the activation energy. All right, so now we have our clipper. All right, now we have our clipper. So let's take a look. We have this guy right here. Let me put the timer on. Let me put the timer on. All right, so what you're going to do is respond with that. We've got 10 seconds to do that. Oops, don't want to do that. All right, go ahead and respond. You should be trying to respond. Let me see if we get responses. One, two, or three. You might have to click your login again, see if that's working. Check your login one more time. What's that? I have no responses yet. Try your login. Hit your login so it flashes. Take your finger off. Flash nothing on that. All right. Now go ahead and let me see what we got here. All right. Oh. Let's try one more time. Let's try that one more time. Here we go. Hold on one second. All right. We have 100%. Let me go to the next one real quick. All right. So did you put increases? I know you didn't, but we'll see, we'll see if the next one works. How many people put increases? All right. That's good. Let's see if the next one works. Let's try on the next one. All right. So here we go. All right. So. Polling is now open. You should be able to start responding now. All right, so we have, all right, we got some people responding. That's good. Now we're working, now we're working. 14, there are what, we said 17? 15, 16, 17, all right. Very good, so let's see what we got. So state the effect of removing one of the reactants. Let's see what we got, all right. Ah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, let's try one more time, see if you can answer. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not now in turning point. Oh boy. Sorry for my uh, visitors. So I apologize. <laughs> Mine's supposed to work. It usually does. You should be able to go ahead and respond now. Let's try this one more time. Let's see if we can do it. Yes, you're responding. That's great. All right, you are responding. 15, 16, 15, we're 16. All right, let me put the countdown clock on. There we go. Somebody is definitely not gone yet. Oh, 17? Somebody's just went. 
All right, so let's see what we got. Everybody responded. And we have 94% of us got decreases right, and somebody put increases. All right, that's okay. Sorry, Andrew. All right, let's let's go down a little bit on that. Sorry, you can't see the black. All right, next, next one. All right, so decreases is correct. Here's our next one. State the effect of the adding a catalyst. What's going to happen to the rate? Got 13. We had the timer. 15, 16. Timer is going. We're waiting on one person. It's okay. You'll get it right. Just trust yourself. There we go. All right. Thank you. All right. How many people think it was one, two, or three? Let's see if who, what we got. How many people got it right? All right. 88 percent foot increase. Two of you got it wrong. Put decrease and no change. A catalyst is an enzyme. It lowers the activation energy. Arjun did it wrong on purpose, I can tell. All right, you don't want to do it wrong on purpose because we're going to start using these and signing your name to your number, Arjun. All right, next. All right, increases is correct as 88% of you said. Next, state the effect of placing on the rate if placing the flask in ice. Here we go. Work that flagpole. Work that flagpole. Five seconds, you gotta go. All right, good. We had 17 answer. Let's see how we did. Did we get 100% yet? We should have. Oh my gosh, it does not increase. It's ice, it gets colder. Colder. When we decrease the temperature, it decreases, it slows down. When we heat it up, as we just talked about, with the fire and the balloon, it expands, more collisions. Ice gets slow. All right, ice gets slow. All right, so decreases, as 88% of you got correctly, two got it wrong. All right, state the effect on the rate if you increase the concentration of a reactant. 10 seconds. Two left. All right, you got them in. Did we get 100 this time? We have more reactants, so we have more what? Collisions. So, with increases, there is a change. There is a change. It increases. I told the shot I put in. All right. All right. Now we have this reaction. Okay. Indicate the effect of raising temperature on this reaction. 2CO plus O2 makes carbon dioxide. Does it increase, decrease, or does it have no change? 10 seconds. Who likes turning point? Yeah. Can we get 100%? What do you think? I'm hoping so. We just went over it again for the third time. Let's see what we got. Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 Increases. Yes. Thank you. All right. So it increases. All right. Next. All right. Indicate the effect of removing O2 in the below reaction. Okay, so I'm going to remove a reactant. 10 seconds. All right. We're missing one. We're missing one. We're missing one. Uh-oh, somebody didn't get an answer in. Thank you, Sharte, for noticing that. What do you think? All right, 94% of you had decrease. Remember, if you put more reactants in, it increases. So in this case, we took a reactant out, it has to decrease. All right, it has to decrease. These follow along if you don't know, they're right in your learning checks. These are the same questions. So if you need to mark them, uh, understand what's happening. We're do we just did the two learning checks. We're just doing a different style. All right? So there would be no reaction at all? What's that? If there would be no reaction. Maybe it decreased, there would be, yeah, there wouldn't be any reaction. Correct. 
All right, next, there's our decrease. Indicate the effect of removing O2. We did that. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can get 100. <laughs> Let's try it again. So the place is not working. Oh, there it is. Yes, it is. Who was last? I guess it was me. That's all right. right. All right, we still have somebody putting in increase. <laughs> we just had that question. <laughs> okay, it is decrease. Yes. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That was because. Uh, well, whatever. All right, thirteen two. What? Give me one second. It is decrease. You're right. Give me one second. I need to uh, stop the Rick recording. All right, check with your neighbor. Make sure your thing is working, please. All right.